the briefing gave very disturbing and tragic picture of the destruction of Yugoslavia, basically. Whilst Mr. Vieira de Merlo's briefing concentrated on Kosovo, he also noted that sanctions and bombing threatened to cause a humanitarian crisis which would affect the most vulnerable members of Serbian society. The UN Under Secretary General says it's important that a strong international presence should be deployed in Kosovo and that the present peace talks should produce results as a matter of urgency. Mark Devonport, BBC News at the United Nations. Aid Command. It would be authorised to secure a safe environment for all Kosovo residents and enable the safe return of refugees and displaced people. The Serbs will have 48 hours to withdraw their air defences from Kosovo in what's a translated text of the agreement calls a quick timetable. They'll have seven days to pull out their remaining forces, including military, paramilitary and police personnel. Meanwhile, NATO bombing of Yugoslavia has continued. The Serbian media said radio television transmitters were hit in Srobodan, north of Belgrade, in the central town of Kraljevo, and in Kosovo's capital, Pristina. The Finnish president, Marti Atasari, is on his way to Cologne to brief EU leaders on the agreement. The peace mission was short and it seems remarkably successful. In a few brief hours, the mediators persuaded President Milosevic this was the best deal on offer. The state news agency, Tanyug, announced his acceptance of the terms in a statement issued a short time ago. The first real sign of progress to waiting journalists was when a special session of the Serbian parliament was called this morning. The cameras were let in briefly, then there was, by all accounts, a heated session behind closed doors. The ultra-nationalist Vojislav Šešel adamantly opposed the entry of Serb troops to Kosovo. But eventually, deputies emerged to endorse the deal. Uh, after more than uh, two months of bombing, who, who, who can think about winning? But uh, we are satisfied, we are very happy, and I do hope that uh, most of Serbian population uh, will share our happiness. But there were also rumblings of discontent against President Milosevic. I would like him to go. But I think that many, many people would ask him why this war was needed if we sign a capitulation two months and a half ago. The news received a quick welcome in Cologne, where European leaders have gathered for their summit meeting. Obviously, if this news is correct and the Serbian parliament and Milosevic's regime have accepted these terms, then that really is progress. The European mediator, Marti Atazari, will now return to Cologne to brief the European leaders. Mr. Chernomerdin is on his way to Moscow. And if the peace deal is all it seems, these NATO troops, currently exercising in Macedonia, could soon be on their way into Kosovo, with the refugees following close behind them. John Lyne, BBC News. And the Serb parliament tends not to act without having the clearance from President Milosevic. Uh, the package that President Akhtasari took with him to Belgrade is a good package. It meets all our basic bottom lines. First of all, all Serb forces out of Kosovo. Secondly, NATO troops into Kosovo. And thirdly, the refugees go home into Kosovo under our protection. Milosevic could have had a deal on that basis eight, nine weeks ago. It has taken the military campaign to compel him to recognize that that's got to be the basis so of a peace deal. If the Serb parliament has accepted that package, then you would be satisfied? No, I need to hear it from the regime. And it's not just a commitment. We also need to see action to implement this agreement. We've had too many cases in the past of President Milosevic making an empty promise. This time, we don't just want fine words, we want to see actions. In particular, we want to see the Serb forces start to withdraw from Kosovo. That's the real test. Have you set the criteria which you would, you would need in order to stop bombing? Have you told him what kind of movement of his forces you need to see? The, the package spells out the withdrawals that we need to see. We need to see, first of all, the air defense units withdrawing within the first 48 hours, and then, over perhaps a week, the, all of the Serb forces withdrawing. We need to see evidence that that withdrawal has started and they're preparing to withdraw all their troops. Remember, it is the military pressure that has secured this diplomatic progress. We can't let up this military pressure until we're clear that President Milosevic is really serious and really understands this is the only way out of the campaign for him. But others may want you to stop the bombing now. Uh, the deal that President Akhtasari took with him was a deal that he brokered with the 
uh, both the Americans, the Russians, and he did so as a European Union envoy. The deal's quite clear and it's quite precise. And uh, if we can secure this, and we're not there yet. We've got to hear from President Akhtasari when he comes here. But if he does report that Milosevic has accepted the package and the whole of the package, uh, then it will have demonstrated that our campaign has been successful in securing our key objectives, and that's to get the refugees back and reverse the terrible ethnic cleansing of Kosovo. Uh, the Serb Parliament and Slobodan Milosevic have both agreed to this deal, so that must be some well, that, cause of celebration. Yeah, that means whatever we have said up to now, that NATO's campaign was working, and it has worked. Milosevic has capitulated. He has to capitulate. He's a war criminal, and he's surrounded by war criminals. So these people had to lose. In this case, they had to lose. They had to give up. And we hope that that would happen. Uh, I, I don't believe until I see things on the ground happening. I don't believe anything coming from Belgrade. But I hope that will happen. And uh, as we uh, have seen for, for these uh, last 70 days, NATO was determined to carry this to, through the end, and they are doing it. Do you fear, then, that he, Slobodan Milosevic, might have won some kind of personal concession in order uh, to agree on a ca capitulation? I don't think so. But uh, at the same time, when I say this, as, as, as far as Albanians are concerned, we want the Serbian troops out of Kosovo, we want to live a, a normal life in Kosovo. We don't care what happens in Serbia at this moment. Of course, in the future we will be neighbors. And uh, we believe that we will be cooperative with the international community, but Milosevic and his regime has killed any prospect of Kosovo remaining neither under Serbia or around Yugoslavia in future. We will deal with that in future, though. But Kosovo Albanians could start going back to Kosovo within days if these reports are true, couldn't yes, they? Yes, they could. If, if Serbian troops withdraw from Kosovo and NATO forces come in Kosovo, they could go immediately, uh, especially those people who, whose houses are still standing. Uh, we, we, we do know that the lots of uh, villages, especially villages, have been totally destroyed and those villages have to be rebuilt for people to be able to, to, to return to their homes. But uh, people will go back and they are very keen in trying to rebuild their homes and we hope in this we will have uh, ha aid and help of the uh, international community. Well, we must leave it there. Bajram Gekach, many thanks to you for joining Thank us you. today. The speed of events took nearly everyone by surprise. Yesterday there had even been doubts about whether the Russian and EU envoys would manage to agree a joint Kosovo peace plan to take to Belgrade. But then, just before 1300 hours today, came the dramatic announcement that President Milosevic of Yugoslavia had agreed to the new proposals delivered by Russia's Viktor Chernomyrdin and the Finnish President Marty Atisari. Mr. Milosevic appears to have yielded to NATO's basic conditions for ending its 10-week air campaign. Some deputies in the Yugoslav parliament have talked of capitulation. NATO has greeted the news with caution, saying it will not give a formal reaction until it receives a report on the Belgrade talks from Mr. Atisari. In the meantime, the airstrikes are to continue. The peace mission was short and it seems remarkably successful. In a few brief hours, the mediators persuaded President Milosevic this was the best deal on offer. The dramatic announcement was made by Marty Atazari. We have been informed that the federal government and the parliament have approved the plan, the peace offer that we made. He is a casualty twice over of war and of hunger. Two-month-old Edisan is suffering from malnutrition. He's now being treated in a refugee camp in Macedonia. Edisan will survive, but aid workers say many others going hungry in Kosovo will not. Each weary group of refugees struggling across the border here looks worse. Most are weak, and these days some are emaciated. Aid workers say starvation is now a very real threat. There is a danger that people could start dying of hunger. It's really not a question of, of, of if, it really is a question of when. And um, unfortunately and sadly and tragically, I think it really is just around the corner. It's only a matter of time that we could start to see people dying of hunger. Naili knows only too well about the hunger inside Kosovo. Before fleeing, she and her children survived on bread alone for a month, and very little of that. The hardest thing was not being able to feed the children, she says. Sometimes they asked for bread, but I had none to give them. They were so upset, they collapsed. Now there is hope of peace for Kosovo, but aid workers say it needs to come soon. 
Otherwise, there will be more lives lost, not from warfare, but from starvation. Here in the refugee camps, at least there is food. But aid workers say many of those remaining in Kosovo have been reduced to scavenging in abandoned houses for whatever they can find. They fear that soon hunger could be the new killer in Kosovo. Orla Gearin, BBC News, Macedonia. Belgium. Very good evening. 72 long days into the Kosovo conflict, peace is in sight tonight. The Serbian parliament has approved a plan that could bring NATO's bombing campaign to an end. But the diplomatic breakthrough isn't enough just yet. NATO remains cautious and says for now airstrikes will continue. The plan follows talks today in Belgrade with Russian and EU envoys. But whilst this is the best chance yet for peace, many questions remain. NATO has made five demands which must be met if the bombings to stop. It wants an immediate end to violence, but how will this be verified? How can NATO be sure that Kosovo is free from atrocities? Oh. My diplomatic correspondent Tim Marshall has sent this report from Belgrade. Parliament went through the motions, but the decision had already been made. President Milosevic had summoned the coalition party leaders the night before and told them the deal was, under duress, acceptable. They voted 136 for, 72 against. Those against were from the Radical Party. They will now leave the government, but their leader issued a warning to the foreign troops now expected to enter Kosovo. My advice for NATO troops, to stay away from Kosovo, because they would not feel safe there. But the opposition leader expressed the widespread relief amongst ordinary people that this is the beginning of the end and the hope that it might be the beginning of something new. Our obligation is, from now, to transform the war into the peace and reconciliation with all the countries of NATO. The intensification of NATO's attacks and continuing destruction of Serbia pushed President Milosevic into the deal. But the wording of the final draft gave him an escape route from the corner he was in. It should be able to be sold to the Serbian people. I would also hope that this decision would lead to contacts between the military so that we can come and start implementation of the plan, start the withdrawal of Yugoslav forces from Kosovo, which will also lead to the suspension of uh, military activities. The Serbian parliament here behind me has approved a document which contains two crucial elements and equally importantly omits a third. It guarantees that Kosovo remains part of Serbia and it fails to call the international peacekeeping force NATO. What it omits is any reference to the War Crimes Tribunal, a none too subtle hint that NATO is not going to go after President Milosevic and bring him to court. That gave him the green light and it proves that he's still the only game in town. Now the wording of the agreement is reached. All that needs to be done now is for it to be carried out. Tim Marshall, Sky News, Belgrade. I just thought that Allied unity would crack, that we wouldn't have the resolve to see it through. We have shown that we are unified, we've shown that we did have the resolve to see it through. Now, as I say, at the present time, there is acceptance of the terms that we have laid down by Milosevic and by the Serbian parliament. But we do need to have it tied down, we do need to have it implemented. Until that happens, then you know, let us exercise some caution. Independence was never on the table and the KLA, the Kosovan Liberation Army, who incidentally Mr Blair will be meeting with uh, very shortly here, uh, never wanted independence. But they are making it quite clear that all of Kosovo will be an international protectorate while remaining nominally part of Yugoslavia. They also say that they want uh, Serbs to stay there if they come from Kosovo and that some, a small quantity, of Serb troops will be allowed back uh, for mine clearance, for liaison and also to protect historic sites. Those are those monasteries. Uh, but the message is very much that these were exactly what was on offer, these terms were exactly what was on offer to Milosevic uh, 10 weeks ago, and that he therefore has been fundamentally under undermined by accepting these terms after his country's been through so much. And uh, they're still talking, although that was never in the agreement, they are still talking about their determination to bring him before a war crimes tribunal. Certainly you wouldn't get very good odds on him staying on uh, as the Serbian leader here in Cologne tonight.
Adam, we'll be back with you when Mr. Atasari arrives in Cologne for the moment. Many thanks. Ruotel e shikuaj së mirë mbrëma, fillojmë edicionin e lajmeve kundër të tjera do të ndiqni. Pas pak qaste, shkryë Ministri i Qeverisë përkoshme të Kosovë, Zotja Shim Thaci, pritë të takot me kryë Ministrin Britanik, Tony Blair. Miratimi dokumentit të pajqes nga ana e Parlamentit të Sërbis është pritur me mjaftë rezerva nga shtetet e bashkurat Amerikës dhe nga NATO. Luftime të repta në Dukajin, Drenic, Lapush e Lap, forca tona që lirimtare kryen aksionet të sukseshme dhe ishkaktojnë armikut humbje të mëdha. Do të ndishni edhe një biset me zëvëndës krye ministrin e qeverisë të përkoshme të Kosovës, zotin Mehmet Hajrizi. Do të njojmë tani më gjërësisht. Si pas burimeve tona nga Kërni, njoftojmë se sot kërë ministri Britanisë së madhe zotit Tony Blair pritë të takot me kërë ministri në qeverisë së Kosovës zotin Ashim Thaci. Takimi do të mbajt në Kërn, ku është duke mbajtur samiti 15 shteteve të bashkimit evropian. Kërë ministri Thaci pritë të njoftot nga zotit Blair lidhur me iniciativat më të reja të bashkësisë ndërkomtare për zgjidhen politike të krizës në Kosovë, duke përfshirë këtu edhe vizita në Qernomerdinit dhe Ahtisarit në Beograd, e cila është duke vazhduar edhe më tutje. Pas përfundimit të vizitës të izjurtare në Gjermani, kërë Ministri Qeverisë të Përkoshme të Kosovës, Hashim Thaci, i shoqëruar nga Bilal Sherifi, Muj Rugova dhe bashkëpuntor të tjerë, mbajti një konferenc shtypi me gazetarët në presë qendrë ndërkomtare në Bonë. Zoti Thaci me këtë rast theksoj se NATO du të vazhdoj me sulmet e saj aerore kundër caqeve ushtarake sërbe. Në këtë kuadr, a i kërkoj dislokimin e trupave toksore në Kosovë. Duk e komentuar për pjekjet më të reja të bashkësis ndërkomtare për zhidin e krizës në Kosovë, Zoti Thaci shpreu dushimin dhe skepticizmin e ti lidur me ndonjë marveshje eventuale me Miloševicin dhe klikën e ti kriminali në Beograd, nga se si që tha a i, agresorët vetëm kur kapitulojnë tërsisht bënd të dëgjuashëm dhe pranojnë një zhidje politike. Today's developments in the Kosovo crisis. The terms and conditions laid down uh, by Mr. Atasari and Mr. Chernomirdin, which were uh, contained therein, all of the necessary terms and conditions that NATO has spelled out and we have spelled out for you on many occasions. If those reports prove accurate, that will be a major step forward. But the question now is the details. Uh, Deputy Secretary Talbot is right now meeting with Mr. Atasari, who will be providing a full readout of the uh, discussions that he had and Mr. Chernomirdin had with uh, the uh, Serb leadership. Uh, we've seen a lot of reports of what it is that the Serb parliament approved. Some of them vary in some important details, important words. Uh, those are the kind of details that make all the difference. So our uh, watchword of the day is caution, codification, and implementation. Caution about the extent to which uh, this does constitute Serb acceptance of the uh, terms and conditions NATO requires. Codification, meaning that additional procedural steps need to be taken if indeed they've accepted them in principle to ensure that all the necessary details have been accepted because in an issue as important as this, uh, as profound as this, having such impact on uh, millions of people in the region, the millions of people in Serbia who are obviously hopeful that President Milosevic has finally seen the writing on the wall and that the tragedy he has uh, brought on the Serbian people will soon end are at stake and obviously the million and a half Kosovar Albanians who have been kicked out of their homes uh, by the Serb forces in this brutal act of ethnic cleansing want to go back to their homes and can do so if indeed these reports prove accurate. So what we're going to be doing in the coming days is confirming the details of what precisely has been agreed to. We're going to be looking for implementation, implementation, and implementation, because it is only implementation of NATO's conditions that will lead to a peaceful resolution of this crisis. And what that means in practice with respect to the air campaign is the beginning of a verifiable withdrawal of all uh, military, paramilitary, and police forces from Kosovo according to a rapid timetable. That is uh, what we are going to be looking for. Uh, we uh, have learned from long experience of dealing with President Milosevic and the Serb uh, officials that verifiable deeds, not seductive words, are the only currency that counts uh, in this conflict. They are the only things we can reliably uh, act upon. It would be cruel indeed if the aspirations of the Serb people for an end to the bombing 
were to be dashed by any backsliding or intransigence or refusal to accept the necessary details on the part of President Milosevic. What is indisputable at this point is that the NATO allies remain united. Uh, they've remained united for a very long time in pursuing a powerful and relentless air campaign that uh, will be uh, the determining factor if indeed President Milosevic has accepted and the Serbs have accepted uh, what press reports indicate they have. Thousand refugees in Albania, many of them crammed into the teeming tent cities which have become their homes. For all of the people here, the priority is to get back to Kosovo. They follow the day's news closely, and most seem to give a cautious welcome to the diplomatic developments in Belgrade, but no one's getting carried away. I spoke to the Regi family who spent two months living under canvas. Their biggest problem is that they don't trust Slobodan Milosevic. We can't believe, believe him because he's a big liar. But I think that NATO must continue in that way with uh, attack. Yura's father, Rachman, also wants to see NATO keep up the pressure. Milosevic is responsible for massacres, he told me. His place is not to negotiate in Belgrade. He should be on trial for war crimes in The Hague. Even as the diplomats talk peace, the war goes on. The NATO jets overhead are on their way to attack Serb forces in Kosovo. The refugees are far from convinced that this conflict is over. There is fresh hope here tonight, but there is no celebration because the people here know that even if things go well, it'll be weeks and probably even months before they can go back to their homes in Kosovo. For them, the daily routine of refugee life is likely to continue for the foreseeable future. Jeremy Cook, BBC News, Kukes. Coming still has not stopped. Uh, the Serbian troops have not begun to pull out from Kosovo. Uh, we don't have the refugees going back. And most importantly, uh, Mr. Milosevic and his regime are very much in control. Obviously, there's a long way to go before this game is won. And I think we're just at the very, very front. There seems to be some good news, but I think, as Mr. Atisari puts it, the pudding is in the eating it, and I don't think that we yet are in a position to swallow what Mr. Milosevic seems to be delivering. Uh, I think we need to be rather cautious, but hopefully we'll have a good result. We discussed uh, many issues, uh, three in particular I would like to discuss with you. First, with regard to Kosovo. As you know, we have been working closely with President Adesari and Mr. Chernomirdin to try to achieve an agreement that would allow the refugees to go home with security, safety, and self-government. Movement by the Serbian leadership to accept these conditions established by NATO and the international community is, of course, welcome. But based on our past experience, we must also be cautious. First, we must have clarity that the Serbian leadership has fully accepted these conditions and intends to fully implement them. Until then, and until Serb forces begin a verifiable withdrawal from Kosovo, we will continue to pursue diplomacy, but we will also continue the military effort that has brought us to this point. In a few moments, I will meet with the Joint Chiefs of Staff to speak about the progress of our campaign and our planning for the force that would enter Kosovo when NATO's conditions are met. NATO and our military have been working hard to ensure that we can sustain our campaign and deploy K-4 quickly and effectively when that is necessary. We have worked to ensure that we can do this while maintaining our overall military posture around the world. They have my complete confidence and support as we move forward. The German Chancellor was unable to contain his feeling of relief and gratitude as he greeted the Finnish President, Marti Artisari, when he arrived in Cologne from Belgrade, after now what looks like a done deal with Milosevic. The Serb President miscalculated all along, according to the British Prime Minister. He thought the Western Alliance would lose its nerve, and it didn't. The justice of our cause was very clear to me from the outset, and I think to most people right around Europe, right around the world. And I think Mr. Milosevic thought that 
allied unity would crack, that we wouldn't have the resolve to see it through. We have shown that we are unified. We've shown that we did have the resolve to see it through. European Union leaders are being very careful not to appear triumphalist. If this agreement is as it appears, it will just come as a great relief. Ten weeks ago to the day, European Union leaders met in a somber mood as the NATO airstrikes began. It was military action reluctantly taken in the cause of humanitarian principle. Now the hope is the bombing can stop. The deal does signify a boost for the EU itself. It was their envoy, the Finnish president, who joined forces with the Russians to get Milosevic finally to capitulate. News from Belgrade indicate that this could be a great day in European and, and in European Union history. The unspoken wish of the European Union is that Milosevic's people will now take their political revenge after suffering so much unnecessarily. Judith Dawson, Sky News, Cologne. If Belgrade is considering peace, there's little sign of it coming out of Kosovo. These families were kicked out of their homes near Suvareka yesterday. One tractor with 42 women and children on board was doused in petrol and set alight. As the families ran from the flames, the police opened up with automatic weapons, narrowly missing this old woman's head. I was trying to shield the children from the bullets. I was screaming. Everyone was screaming. I couldn't see anything, but I felt the heat of the bullets as it passed through my scar. 25 young men travelling with them were separated from their families. Two were killed when they tried to run into the forest to escape. The Kosovars in Albania are cautiously optimistic about the news, but still fear what they will find when they eventually do go home. NATO has, has to guide them everywhere, everywhere they go, because, uh, as you know, there are landmines everywhere, uh, inside in the houses, in the garden, in, in the street, everywhere you go. And uh, I think without NATO, that that's simply is not possible. As yet another group of refugees head for the camps they say there is absolutely no sign of reconciliation from inside Kosovo. If anything, the Serbs are being more brutal than ever before. Ross Appleyard, Sky News, Albania. With the war continuing and agreement to end it in sight, speed was essential. As the Finnish president arrived...